Our next speaker is um, the person who, who kind of goaded us to do Grand Avenue. Um, Harold Miller uh, knew much more than I knew about Grand Avenue because his grandfather started a store. Harold, you want to tell us about it? I, I figure you got to wonder who is that strange guy walking around with a hanger under his arm. You know, but I, I'll but I'll let you know there at the end. I, uh, Grand Avenue is part of my life, and um, my my grandfather Isidore was born in 1894 in a small village there in Poland near the Russian border, and came here 1908. Married my grandmother in 1914. Nice short marriage, 74 years married. I actually got married, uh, you know, here in the Worcester Square area. My grandmother's sister lived there, and up on the third floor, and that's where they got married. Uh, within three weeks of getting married in 1914, my grandfather opened a little tailor shop right off of Grand Avenue, and over the years, I uh, stayed on Grand Avenue for all of that length of time, uh, you know, at a couple of different locations until the, the late 40s and throughout the 50s, and I, until an event came along. Uh, unfortunately, 1961-1962, some representatives of the state of Connecticut came into the store. We were then on the corner of Grand Avenue and Bradley Street. I said, Mr. Miller, you know, we have good news and bad news. <laughs> and he said, well, what's the bad news? Well, our engineers have just determined that our new highway, we're going to call it I-91, I-91, has got to go right through your store. <clears throat> you know, Perlmutter's across the street. He can stay. But your store has to come down. So goodness, what's the good news? Well, the state is prepared to buy out all of your inventory and your showcases and everything else in between. And when my grandfather found out how much they were willing to pay for it, he contacted some liquidators in New York and he brought them in to have a liquidation sale. And at the end of the sale, they, they took everything remaining and they brought it back to the warehouses. And, and, and that's how the store ended, but in the in the interim, you know, it, the the store was was a focal point. I mean, I I enjoyed it so much. It just, I, uh, my grandfather, a wonderful, wonderful person. He couldn't wait. He couldn't wait until I got my driver's license uh, in 1959, because all of a sudden now I became the driver. I could deliver clothes to people. I could do. Uh, collections and he would very gracious I mean he would uh, let anybody pay you know according to their means a dollar a week it didn't matter and I would go along they would uh, have me collect I would bring it in and I think I knew just about every street around here uh, so, but, but that's the way he was and just to give you an idea there was a gentleman that came in one day uh, you know, to buy some clothes, couldn't afford it, not at the time, promised to pay. And my, my Uncle Mac, who was in the store at the time, said, Pop, Pop, you can't sell to this man. He says, I've just been reading about him. He, he got out of jail 10 days ago. My grandfather said, just got out of jail, huh? He says, so he needs a new set of clothes. You know, <laughs> that's, that's the kind of mensch, the kind of good person that he was and I'm so happy we're doing this uh, in behalf of Grand Avenue um, I spent so much of my time there um, along Grand Avenue uh, just to tell you here of course there's a hanger the hanger is 60 years old the hanger says Miller's Clothes 751 Grand Avenue New Haven it has their phone number on it. Locust 21635. That's it. <laughs> and it just, 
it, it's just a, a, a wonderful thing and something that I'm, I'm just so proud of and, 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 and this survives it. So uh, I'm very pleased to be part of this tour and to relive all of these memories that I had uh, that are, are truly special for me. Thank you so much.